Ah, uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, Mark from Mazda Media, your host for tonight's show. You're watching the Mazda Media Show live on Facebook Live. It is June sixteenth, eight p.m. on the East Coast. If you're on the West Coast, it is five o'clock in the evening. Very big night in sports tonight. Game six of the NBA Finals is underway from Boston. The Boston Celtics uh, lost the last two games, so the Warriors are up three games to two and are looking to win the NBA championship tonight. And the Boston Celtics are looking to extend the series to a seventh game if they can be victorious. The Colorado Avalanche lead the Stanley Cup one game to nothing, defeating the Tampa Bay Lightning, who have been a Stanley Cup mainstay for many years now. I believe it's three years in a row. Um, so that's underway as well. They won 4-3 in overtime last night. We're going to kick off our first hour before the NBA Finals begins. We're actually going to be covering the game tonight by discussing uh, pro wrestling and all of the news that's coming out of the pro wrestling world. Uh, we're going to start off with our, our big news. Initially, our program was going to kick off with Jeff Hardy conversation. Uh, but last night, Vince McMahon news uh, broke all over the Internet uh, with a paralegal and some uh, hot affairs uh, in the life of Vince McMahon. Currently, the WWE board is probing a secret $300 mil, excuse me, $3 million, uh, so I'll go over right there, a $3 million hush pack by CEO Vince McMahon. And apparently he's being probed and they're looking into all this stuff. And, and every news outlet's covering this. Fox Business, CNN, CNNBC, Yahoo Sports. My local news are, news uh, companies, our news uh, networks here in Bo Massachusetts and Boston are covering it. So this is all over the place right now. People Magazine, just everyone um, is covering this news. It's a hot topic. And, and quite honestly, I mean, for most of us as WWE fans, we've always kind of thought that as owner of the company and considering some of the women that have been employed with that company over the years, it's safe to say that some of those women have been extremely attractive over the years. And uh, if you think otherwise, you're, 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 not, you're not thinking clearly enough because there's been a lot of gorgeous women in WWE all throughout the years. And you've seen it backstage in the company over the years. If you've watched Total Divas, you know. It's a it's a dating it's a dating uh, a group back there in WWE. Everybody's dating one another. Everybody's, you know, getting married and uh, having kids. And um, you know, back in the day, it was Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth. Now it's like Macho Man's and Miss Elizabeth's all over the place. Um, so according to the outlet. Um, an investigation by the company began in April after the board received an anonymous email notifying them of, of an alleged $3 million payment. 76-year-old Vince McMahon paid a female paralegal to prevent her from discussing their alleged sexual relationship or making critical statements about him. The parties signed the agreement in January, and McMahon used personal funds to pay the woman, the World Wall Street Journal published Wednesday. WWE did not respond, immediately respond, to multiple inquiries from people on Thursday. A spokesperson for the company told Wall Street Journal that the relationship between McMahon and the now former employee was, it was consensual. WWE is cooperating with the investigation and taking allegations seriously, they added. People has reached out to Vince McMahon's attorney for comment. In the first email sent to WWE's board in March, the anonymous sender claimed McMahon hired the paralegal at a salary of $100,000 and increased her pay to $200,000 when they began their sexual relationship, according to the Wall Street Journal. A lot of according to the Wall Street Journal here by People Magazine. The message claimed the employee eventually left the company when she became scared following the payments to keep quiet. Hush, hush. Very fresh off the QT and very hush, hush. The message claimed the employee eventually left the company when she became scared, as you know. WWE's inquiry into the sexual, sexual misconduct accusation may have also shed light on additional non-disclosure agreements and payments totaling millions. One million dollars. McMahon and his wife, Linda McMahon have held prominent roles in the company throughout its history, 
and have also featured as character been featured as characters in WWE's television programs. And it should be noted one of their most popular storylines together was the Vince McMahon Trish Stratus storyline with Linda McMahon going in a coma and eventually snapping out of her coma at WrestleMania to slap Vince. Um and kind of turn things uh, in a negative direction here. Yeah. Um, oh, geez. Maria's coming out now. Eric's reporting. So Eric's got a little bit of report. Uh, Dan's with us tonight. Eric is going to be joining us shortly, it appears. Joe, we never know where Joe is right now. I'm uh, here, by the way. Oh, Eric. Oh, here. I don't see you in the... Oh, there it is. I was looking through my... Um, I was clicking the Skype thing where it highlights over the Skype logo. And I was showing the previous... Um, version of who was in the room, and then when I actually opened up Skype, then I saw you there. Welcome to the show, Eric. Thank you for joining us. Um, so Eric has just shared uh, something from 411mania.com, um, in which the report that WWE's board of investigation, um, uh, board is investigating Vince McMahon, um, has also um, had some comments here from some wrestling figures throughout the industry. Uh, Vince Russo, namely. Uh, it says, now it makes sense. No wonder Vince Kennedy McMahon wanted me to work for free. He had to somehow make up for that cool three man, three man living in sin of the holiday. And that, that's a low blow, bro. That's a low bro blow. Uh, yeah, man, I, I'll take that with a large cold glass of karma. Okay. Uh, Mr. Russo continues here. Will this be covered in the Netflix documentary, Bro, Me, and Ferreira? Couldn't have written a better script. This is gold, Jerry Gold. Vince, I'll stop. Just send me some hush money. Uh, Vince Russo continues, so much uh, of this is beginning to make sense. Did the children know this was coming? Bro, you live in a, uh, live a good, honest life, and this shit doesn't happen real simple. Okay, well, that's, his, that's just like his opinion, man. Uh, Maria Canellis, uh, former, former uh, flame of mine. Uh, just kidding. Uh, me and her have had some... I've had wars with this woman all over the internet, from Twitter to Facebook. Uh, me and her have been going at it. Oh, we used to go at it back around 2017, 2018, around there. Uh, Maria says, A simple definition of the abuse of power is the misuse of a position of power to take unjust advantage of individuals, organizations, and governments. Well, that's very interesting, Maria, because considering that this relationship between Vince and that paralegal was consensual. If anybody's ever seen 21, uh, uh, excuse me, the other guys, uh, Will Ferrell's a part of a singing group at a local bar, and he goes, it was consensual. Um, Dean Mojo Motati, whoever that guy is, what a day. Uh, Eugene, uh, who's apparently still alive, and he hasn't died from suicide. Uh, any WWE news? Gil Kim, no comment at this moment, and uh, that's that's about it there. Uh, looks like the Iron Sheik said something as well. Um, fuck Hulk Hogan, fuck Hulk Hogan wholeheartedly. So that's what Iron Sheik said today on Twitter. Um, but yeah, this is this is interesting news. I mean, it's it, to me it's no shock. Um, you know, cancel culture the way it is out there. Um, you know, Hulk Hogan's been a victim of it, and, and others have been victims of it. And quite honestly, it's probably been a miracle to this point that no former woman like that's been on TV over the years has ever come forward. You know, Vince McMahon's always portrayed himself, and I'm pro Vince McMahon. Um, if he's done things like this, you know, if him and his wife came to an agreement that, like, you know, basically, look, we're not really married anymore, even though we're technically married. You know, if you want to have relationships with other women, so be it. Well, Vince McMahon's not really a villain then. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a free market, I guess. That you know, maybe having um, being with another woman while in a marriage, despite separation, um, or being on the rocks, um, might still be considered cheating. But I guess at the same time, um, you know, Vince, um, you know, really has. Um, what's this here? Facebook's messaging me that I haven't interacted with five people in a while, and I need to contact them. No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know. If their kind of relationship was already broken and they're kind of maybe on the path to a divorce or anything, I mean, at that point, people tend to start seeing other people and just moving on with their lives. And that's pretty much how it goes, you know, and that's that's just the way it is in life. But, um, you know, that's why I'm not going to villainize Vince. No, I mean, I'm sure if he was abusing his power, like Maria suggested and Maria, you know, me and Maria have had a couple of clashes about a couple of different issues. Um, and one of them was actually a sexual assault debate. Um, and I actually, you know, said, you know, you, you, you kiss the ass of certain people when it benefits you. Um, and then you also try to bring those people down when it benefits you as well. Uh, basically calling her just a vulture. Uh, Maria is a very big mouth woman. 
um, really, really attractive back in the day, uh, and still a good-looking woman to this day. Uh, but she's very much full of herself. She's quite arrogant, um, and she has a big mouth. And I think, quite honestly, Maria would be wise to maybe shut her mouth every now and then, and um, maybe people like myself online wouldn't have to put her in check. We don't know all the facts about what Vince McMahon does. And, you know, to Maria's defense, maybe she knows something we don't know. Maybe she's seen him. Maybe he's he's made passes at her that we don't know about. Maybe at Candace Michelle. You know, maybe at other women from that era. I don't know. Maybe Melena. I don't know. But we'll wait and see. But, um, you know, what she says, a simple definition of the abuse of power is the misuse of a position of power to take unjust advantage of individuals, organizations, and governments. Well, if that's a, that's a consensual relationship, as it's at least being told to us or reported to us, then really he's not abusing any power at all. Um, and, and furthermore, I'll be looking to see if any other, other women come forward in the coming days, because you know the way it is usually. Um, one woman or, or one story will leak, um, and then usually other women that have been uh, treated in similar fashion that was unwelcomed uh, may come forward. And who knows? Maybe there were other women that had consensual relationships with Vince over the years that we don't know about. But Vince has always had an eye for beauty. Um, you know, like I said, some of the most attractive women I've ever seen on television in my life and in person in my life when attending events have worked for that company. And it goes back to when I was a kid when Miss Elizabeth was in the company. Um, you know, and, and, you know, he was always all about Sable. He was always a little bit more, um, uh, gung-ho about Sable for Trish, Tori, Stacy Keebler, uh, Trish Stratus, Tori Wilson, Stacy Keebler, if you don't know their full wrestling names. And then, um, of course, Milena, you know, he'd always be seen like kind of being like uh, almost like a wrestling version of Hugh Hefner and and really just trying to parade himself around women and, and really alpha male it up um, and usually portray himself on camera, you know, as as being, um, you know, the alpha male. Like they imitated the uh, Nic uh, Nicole Sheridan, I think your name was, um, Nicolette, uh, whatever her name, whatever that woman was from um Real Housewives or whatever, um, Desperate Housewives, and she was in Beverly Hills Ninjas. Um, you know they they had all um, they had all <clears throat> been imitating that um, Monday Night Football thing between her and T.O. and <clears throat> and then on WWE on Raw the next week, um, you know they imitated that as well with Vince instead being, um, you know, portrayed as a, um, you know, a, a, in T.O.'s spot with Trish Stratus and a towel and a face mask, which was a funny segment, but again, it just kind of shows Vince's tenacity to try to, you know, constantly portray himself as, a, as an alpha male. He, even when he was married, I mean, he's literally appearing on camera, you know, uh, with Candace Michelle one time and he's, he's groping her leg and, you know, they're all flirtatious on the couch. And I'm sitting here thinking, this dude's a married man. So, I mean, if you're out there thinking, you know, Linda McMahon's, you know, Linda McMahon's basically like Hillary Clinton in this situation. Let me just put this to you. Linda McMahon and Hillary Clinton are all well aware of Vince McMahon and Bill Clinton's things. It's, it's never been a shock, okay? I mean, Linda McMahon has seen what Vince has done on television, you know, and a lot of those segments actually featured her. <clears throat> but, um... You know, it's not it's not too far to say that people, the way they act on TV, is an exaggeration of the way that they act uh, in real life. You know, and, and if this man aspires to come off on television as this alpha male guy with all these beautiful women around him, you know, what's to stop him from wanting to be that way in real life? And many people over the years have always assumed that, you know, he's um, he's had some a little moments with each woman behind you know closed doors over the years that have worked for that company so hearing such a report that he was with a woman back in 2019 to me does not come as much as a shock um and whether or not that behavior is justified or not it really is dependent upon the relationship he has with his wife um at this time you know who knows maybe she's moved on to another man as well um and that's um you know that that's kind of what where we're at right now uh, we kind of look more into how this company's kind of gone lately. Stephanie McMahon taking a leave of absence. Um, who knows? Maybe maybe Stephanie McMahon knew about it. I don't know. I don't know what Stephanie McMahon's reasoning was. Maybe it was her kids. Maybe it was, um, you know, maybe it was something. I don't know. But she obviously decided to move on and fairly recently. And, and you know, maybe obviously this stuff was already under investigation weeks ago and 
or either that or maybe she was already preparing to uh, help her dad out in a legal battle. I don't know. But um, this is the problem with this company going public. And I, and I still to this day think that this company going public was a great decision from a financial standpoint and has been a disaster from a controlling the stake in your company. You know, once you go public, it's like when Wayne Enterprises went public um, and Batman Begins and Bruce Wayne bought back most of the shares. The company went public a week ago. Yes, and I bought most of the shares. You know, when you got all these shareholders involved, things like that. You know, when you own your own private company, you know, they were already successful when they were their own private company. You know, they really didn't need to go public. And I think the only reason why they probably didn't, Dan probably knows more than I do about this, is because of the financial benefit of it. And, you know, furthermore, you know, this has now become a company that's really been controlled by other factors and other people. And, you know, unfortunately, it's been a um, been an issue. So... You know, that all said, you know, who knows what direction this is going to go in. Now, Dan um, has not been short on opinions uh, in our group. Uh, Dan had quite a bit to say about this yesterday, and I'm sure he's going to kind of reiterate those remarks and also maybe even add some uh, newfound perspective that he's kind of obtained over the past, really, 24 hours. So I'd like to welcome Dan to the show. And Dan, uh, let's just start to get your take on, on what's going on with Vince McMahon here. How you doing, pal? <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you like me now? How do you like me now? Uh, you know, it's... it's I, don't, I don't think we were going to get more comedic, Dan, to start the show. I was thinking more serious, Dan, off the start, but it would no, be you know what, That's good. It, this is this whole like you know this whole week has just been like a, a, a comedy because everything started on Monday, and then you know with the the other story that we thought was going to be leading in tonight, instead all of a sudden yesterday it was just like, well that just knocked that fucking thing right out the window. Um, Jeff Hardy, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about Jeff. We'll talk about Hardy. Oh, folks, later. chicken fries are now two for five at McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that my local Burger King said it was two for six last night. Um, oh, or two nights ago, whatever it was. I'm like, two for five? the same guy that you had problems with lately? No, 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 no. Different place. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, please continue. Uh, and as I've learned more uh, about this situation, as I've more come out about the situation, I can sit there and say that, um, you know, I, I've always been a pro Vince guy. He's an insane person. Bottom line, <laughs> you have to, have to be, you have to kind of be to be in a position of power that he's been in and also be this creative. Um, you know, he's not also willing. He's also been willing to kind of put his family out to the forefront as well that for his own financial and creative benefits. Um, you know, I, I mean, everybody now looks back on it and, and I look back on it as a 17, as a 16, well, actually it was 17 when this happened, when, um, they were in Washington, DC, Paul Heyman's first night with the company. Uh, and it was the famous Trish Stratus crawl around, like, crawl around like a dog. And that's one of the greatest lines in history in the history of commentary in any pro wrestling company in history. Paul Heyman, first night in the job at WWE. Hey, Mom, I'm in Washington, D.C., and I get to see Butch. That, oh, that folks, just shows you the goddamn genius of Paul Heyman. But it also proves the fact, too, that this is a... Um, th this is a man that is... He doesn't have vices. You know, he doesn't drink, really. He doesn't uh, He doesn't smoke, at least cigarettes and that type of stuff. I already like weed, but that's the, the, the one thing that I've heard around the, the, the campfires at certain points. Uh, RBD has mentioned it considering he gave him rolling papers. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, Rob. Uh, hey, Rob. I love it, pal. Uh, tell me, uh, is that OG chocolate pretty good? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you have this, um, you know, he, the man is an insane person. Like, he's proven that. But also at the same time, to me, it's like it's Walt Disney and Vince McMahon. 
And the way that things kind of business-like have been going lately, that very well could be in the next five years, one and the same. Uh, it could be sooner than that with this recent situation going on. Um, I think Vince McMahon will skate it just because of the fact that um, he has 80% control of the board. Uh, the only thing that would hurt him is if really there's a public outcry or if the stock really goes down to the shitter. Luckily for him, the stock price is probably going to, like, is I don't think will be affected by this. I think the stock price will be affected because of the global market situation anyways. It has nothing to do with what this situation is going on with. I mean, obviously it doesn't help, but at the same time, I think that this is a moral issue more than I think it is a corporate or business issue. And I think the other issue that would probably come up is if he used company funds to pay her off. And personally, if he uses his own for personal a money. Oh, go ahead, Danny. You're on a roll, sorry. No, no. I was just going to say, if it's if his own used, personal money, it's almost a non-issue immediately. It, exactly. If he used his own personal money, who gives a shit? Like this should not, this shouldn't even be out there. I mean, and the fact is, and everything it's been reported by several that Vince and Linda are still married, but they have not had a what people would call a relationship in many, many years. So if he's doing this, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, and also we're also learning that uh, from this whole story that Vince McMahon is also the type of guy that if you work for him. He might throw you a piece. Uh, <laughs> People power. Yeah. People power. It's, it's, and, and the fact is, is that, like, you, you think about it, like, uh, Jim Ross was sitting there, and he's just like, God damn. Like, I was a talent relations. He didn't do a goddamn thing for me. You know, and the same thing with Cornette. You know, <laughs> it's, and, but he has to fucking throw it to John Laronitis who literally has done nothing business. Like, it's just, it, what, the best part about this is that Laronitis is going to lose his fucking job. Like, if anything, this is this is, should be celebrated if this whole story comes out with John Laronitis losing his job. And not, not only that, but the fact of, because of the situation that's been going on, because of this um, investigation that's been going on internally in the company since April, uh, buck tooth beaver motherfucker, uh, Kevin Dunn, uh, might have possibly sold his stock in May, which means that is an SEC violation because of insider trading, meaning that that buck tooth beaver motherfucker could be in serious trouble, which nothing makes me happier. Because the two biggest problems I feel like in WWE is not Vince McMahon itself. Even though I think Vince, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again at 73 years old, him making creative, excuse me, 76, I think, uh, him making creative decisions for people in an 18 to 49 demographic really doesn't work. But at the same time, I have to look at what Vince has done and say he was right about Roman Reigns oh, after all. It took him a while, but he still was right. Um, you know, he was right about John Cena. He's been right about the Cody Rhodes bringing him back in the booking with that and giving him a presentation of just saying, you're fine in AEW as the character and what you've been doing, but you need to come back to an audience, I think, that will accept you more, which somehow now has worked, um, even though, you know, the injury may kill his momentum, but. I think at the same time, he'll come back around the same at the end of the year or at the Royal Rumble, and he'll be better. So creatively, I think Vince still has something there. Um, but I think if you get rid of Kevin Dunn and John Laronitis, I think that opens up a whole new world as far as the way production is, because you don't have two guys, I think, that just go along with everything Vince thinks. Vince needs to be able to have combative people around him. Um, you know, but this situation, it, it, I feel bad for Stephanie. I think that this is, uh, she kind of wanted to get probably cut bait before this thing hit because it was probably going to show she was going to have, and it's still something, it's embarrassing. 
you know, you feel bad because it's like, you know, oh, Jesus, your old man just paid. Yeah, I get it. You know, it's it's embarrassing. Uh, but, you know, Vince McMahon could give a shit. This is somebody uh, was saying that this probably is like the closest thing, the worst thing that's happened, I think, internally since. um you know, the steroid trial, which, you know, there's been other instances since then of the over the edge thing with Owen Hart, which they weren't in jeopardy of losing the company. I think that was just, you know, one that really put the company in jeopardy, I think, at a point of a public relation and business point of view. I mean, financially, that could have went terribly for them. Um, but I, I think that this, I, I think that this it, this hurts them public relations wise. Wise, but at the same time, it's like eh, it's hard with wrestling because in wrestling wise, like if this was a private entity, still was not publicly traded, this wouldn't fucking be an issue. The fact that it's a publicly traded company, he's the CEO, the chairman, the face, the man of the brand, the the man who's literally built this fucker up from the ground up since uh, 1980 uh, on. I mean, he, he's he been the face. And this has been the most, pro this is the NBA, Major League Baseball, the NFL, major, everything you could think of as far as Major League Sports is concerned. This is what WWE is as far as sports entertainment and pro wrestling is concerned. They are the major brand. And um, the fact that the chairman now is involved in a situation where, yes, it was consensual, but also at the same time, um, you know, it, it's still public relations wise. It's just you don't want to see it publicly, but even if it was consensual, just because of the backlash that now this shit gets, you know, because then it's just going to be like, well, he paid her off this time and it was consensual. But what about the other situations that he's been involved in? And that they want to go back even further. And now you wonder if Vince didn't pay off anybody and all those people start to fucking come out of the woodwork now. Does this open up a crane of worms down the line that could lead to the ousting of Vince? You know, like right now, the pot is on the flame on the stove. And it just got there. Now you wonder if the heat's going to get turned up a little bit, a bit and it starts to fucking boil. And then if you wait another week, wait another two weeks, three weeks down the line, this fucking thing could be really boiling. Because you thought about the Stephanie McMahon thing, which happened, and everybody was theorizing on why all of a sudden now she's leaving the company taking or taking a quote-unquote hiatus. Um, and now it just it becomes clean as day i think on why and now you wonder is a mcmahon going to be running the company in six months to a year or two years from now is this situation going to get worse before it gets better how many girls are now going to come out of the woodwork um because this could be the beginning of an avalanche this could be the beginning of a rolling ball i mean you know there's going to be positives and negatives that come out of the situation. The positive positives are, is that maybe this will teach him to kind of start to act his own fucking age and understand that, you know, what is not acceptable anymore. You, he has learned progression wise over the years, as far as of some of somebody that's been able to adapt with the times. Yes. He does have that alpha male, male mentality, but he can also now sit there and say, yeah, this is probably, this is unacceptable to human society uh, and also to the business world. The negatives that can come out of this is the fact of, is it uh, open more skeletons come out of the closet? Um, and that's when things really start to crumble in the house of McMahon. And that's when you start to think um, who's going to be running this company. And who's going to be running the business, not only the, uh, the, the wrestler, the creative side, who are they going to be able to slot in there? Um, you know, and what is their idea going to be? It's in that, that corporate shakeup. 
and is the talk of AEW fans going to be Tony Khan? Did he buy the company? <laughs> <I mean. laughs> so you, you wonder, you wonder now what the can of worms is going to come out of this, or if this is just going to cool off quick. Um, because I, I think if there's one with that we know of, there's probably going to be more. They might not come out of the woodwork. They might not. Not. I mean, fact is, is that. I mean, I've seen guys that have been dead for years. All of a sudden, shit just comes out on them. I have seen, you know, people that you never, in your wildest dreams, you would have told me 15, 20 years ago that what would have happened to Bill Cosby. I wouldn't have fucking believed it. Um, but you look at eh, all these people that we used to look up to, these people that... Um, used to have, uh, you know, pop culture relevance or people that we used to watch on our television on a consistent weekly basis, and how many of them now have been brought to light of doing terrible things behind the scenes. And you wonder if that is going to happen now. It may not. This may be a non-story in two weeks, or this may kick everything up. So it really can go either way right now. I'm going to kind of defer my time because I really want to start making fun of Jeff Hardy. So I kind of want to Sounds hand good. this over to Eric. Eric, uh, go right ahead, Eric. Welcome to the show, Eric. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, good evening. Um, you know, I'm trying not to say this without sounding like horrible, but and I think one of my friends in one of my text groups said it too, it's like, it's actually amazing that there hasn't been more cases like this, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, for whatever the case may be, you know, Dan said best um, to finish up, like it could either be, um, you know, this is just the beginning of, you know, the end, not necessarily the end of WWE, but, you know, McMahon's tenure where he might have to be forced out of creative or given up his position. Or, you know, maybe a month later, you know, we're talking in our group chat and be like, Hey, remember a month ago they had this whole hush money uh, controversy with Vince McMahon? Whatever happened to that? You know what I mean? So it, it can go one way or the other. Um, uh, yeah, it's just... I know like a lot of people had speculated before anything was de- like more detailed was being released. I know like one of the things that was coming out was, um, was he having an affair? Was it with like, um, any of the talent, but actually that wasn't the case. It turned out to be a paralegal. Um, I guess, you know, right now is really, I, I think Dan had it well covered, but I think, I think before we can actually n- know what more to say in details with with this or um to be able to come up with a conclusion i think we'll just have to wait and see what the investigation will come up with and see you know when more details um get released from all this so we'll see what happens right here with vince mcmahon um you know And then, yes, I heard about, you know, that too. You know, Dan was talking about it with um, the rumor is Kevin Dunn with insider trading um, because there was, interesting enough, an article mentioned about how um, stock was being sold just conveniently enough just before... um, that news article got released. So the timing just seems a little suspicious. And for, 
you know, I don't know. The SEC might might start wanting to look into that as well. So it just kind of seems like it's a bl- terrible day yesterday and today for the upper management. And I'm sure board members cannot be too happy with what's going on. You know, and it was already start of a rough calendar year. Um, you know, if we go back to maybe what October, November of last year, where you know we were talking about how Triple H almost died, and then what happened last month? Stephanie was you know quote unquote taken to a leave of absence, which Honestly, it almost sounds more like she might not be coming back. We just don't know. Um, and now with this, with Vince McMahon and one of his right-hand men and Kevin Dunn, also with um, John Laurinaitis. So it's just all one messed up situation that it needs to get cleaned up especially you know you talked about it yesterday you know the problem right now here's the biggest issue with it being a publicly trade company so there's going to probably create a whole lot of um consequences and um there's going to probably have to be some form of punishment that might be happening down the road so we'll have to see yeah that's it it's just it, it, in retrospect it's just completely mind-blowing to ever think that the mcmahons would be on the line like this where stephanie mcmahon was kind of on her way out and you know vince was pretty much in hot water it's it's kind of unfathomable if you go back 20 years like you would just never would have expected like how would that you know someone like nick Khan walk into the company and suddenly be like Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I'm the captain now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, really? Right. Really, you know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's... No, that's that's spot on. Yeah, it's right on the money right there. Yeah. With, like, Nick Khan. Unreal, man. It's crazy. It's just so crazy, man. I'll tell you, I don't... Uh... Like, I think Dan said it best. You know, we really don't know what direction this is going to go in. It's, it, we're in wait-and-see mode. Right now, it's it's not boiling. It's not cool, but it's at a nice little simmer right now um, is where, where we're at. So that's pretty much uh, where we're at right now for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just kind of a wait and see and see what yep. the results and the verdict comes from all yep. this. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. And uh, there's really no way of telling right now where this is going to go. You know, right. there's no, there's no way. I mean, it's just, it's too soon and we don't know what information's out there. Um, and again, like I said, if, if the money was not taken from the, co- you know, I, I doubt that he would have ripped off stock or, or something like that from the company and used that to pay off someone. I, I highly, I, I, if that ends up coming out as true, I will be shocked yeah, if I that is too. the case. Cause I would find that almost highly hard to believe. Yeah, because Vince McMahon was always smart when it came to, at least with um, contracts, because, you know, uh, Chris Jericho talked about it, how he went to visit Vince McMahon, and Vince was very smart about how, um, you know, Jericho was saying he was very smart about how he was able to avoid any like interference with Jericho being under contract with WCW at the time and yet still to me with him. So I don't think he would be that dumb to be like, hmm, maybe I should just take money out of my own right. company and go like, you know, he's he's not going to do that. I mean, uh, right. that's that's why I'm like, uh, to me, it's like, how was like, like, how was the board? Like, in my opinion, how was the board even 
able to invest it. Like if I, like if you go to the casino right now, Eric, and you decide yeah. to spend, let's just say, you know, a couple thousand dollars of your own money, and you go out to that casino tonight, and you just spend the money on everything, you know, every, every machine and every slot machine, every betting table, right. and you, you just go completely freaking off, you're out of your mind. When you go to work the next day, your 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 company or, or your school is not going to put you on leave and place you under investigation for your own affairs. You, you know, like that's not gonna, and I don't mean like affairs by relationship affairs. I mean, affairs as in just your daily practices yeah. of whatever, yep. whatever no, you're I, doing. I got you. You know, like they don't have the right to do that. You know, it's like, and then you got, um, you know, these people like, oh, well, we're gonna investigate, excuse me, how I, how I spend my money. You know, if I'm, you know, if you're a married man and you're a school teacher, and you and your wife decide to get a divorce or both decide to cheat on one another or separate, that is none of your employer's business. Right. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, like what, what is the board of WWE's business? And I'm not here, like I said, I'm not here to say Vince is the good guy, Vince is the bad guy. I'm here to say, what is their business? Like, what authority do these people have to do something like this like i don't understand like you mean to tell me that i could have a personal issue oh we understand you and your wife got in an argument last night um we understand that you didn't send your kid to school because they had the sniffles and we didn't think that that was a sufficient enough reason to keep your kid out of school that i mean like like what they have the right if it's not maybe maybe what they're maybe what it is and this is probably what it is is they probably got an anonymous tip and they said Vince McMahon had spent three million, three um, something dollars, you know, three million dollars in hush money to a, a woman he had an affair with. And maybe all the board of directors is really investigating as whether or not that was Vince's money or their own money. And I don't know if that goes any deeper than that. And I mean, if he spent his own money and had an affair, I mean, whoop de do, you know, it's like. <laughs> and I just get a kick out of people. Um, you know, people have affairs or something. Companies think it's their right to send people packing. You know, if you if you have your own personal relations, you know, there's nothing that you do at your job that is, is really, you know, requiring your personal life to have a factor on your job. It's like, honestly, just go away. <laughs> That's yeah, my, I mean, my, yeah, go ahead. unless if there was like some kind of moral clause, which I doubt that you would usually see. And it's, but I mean, is it morally wrong? Sure. But is that going to be like, um, you know, something that, like you said, that's worth getting fired? Or losing your job? No. I mean, you know, kind of look at, like, athletes. Um, I mean, shoot, like, you know, I've been re-watching, like, you know, Last Dance on Netflix. Mm. Michael Jordan, yeah, he's the best, was definitely one of the best. But, yeah, sure, he was a real asshole. And, <laughs> you know, like, all the rumors are, like, him going gambling and all that. I mean, guess what? That raises questions about, you know, his, like, integrity being, like, would he bet on basketball while he's playing? I mean, but guess what? Did he, you know, I mean, it's like, well, he didn't do it. So, you know, you can't, like, suspend him for that. Right. You know, he has every right to do that as long as he's doing it legally. Mm. And same case here. Um you know, I mean, you know, I'm sure hush money is kind of looked as frowned upon and everything like that. But, you know, hush, hush, oh, I, uh, hush, hush, why do I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, Eric, I'm just going to kind of pass this back. Along. I'm going to skip my yeah. thoughts on Jeff Hardy. And I'm just going to pass it right back to Dan. Then I'll go back. To yeah, you. go ahead. I'm just going to sit out this round because of the. Uh, we get about 15 minutes before we close this portion of the show and uh, open up with uh, the NBA Finals. So Dan, I'm just going to go right to you, Dan. Uh, just take about 10 minutes, and then we'll give the rest of the time to Eric, and we should be good. So um, I got a joke for you. I got a joke for you. Um, 
so AEW's uh, uh, demo this week for 18 to 49 was 0.28. Do you know what Jeff Hardy's blood alcohol level was on Monday? Oh, I like this joke. Higher? <laughs> <laughs> 0.294. Oh, man. That's funny. The man at a higher blood alcohol level in AEW had ratings. Oh, you made that one up yourself, or did you find that one? No, I just looked at the numbers, and I was just okay. like, eh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's interesting when you say it, and you've said it all this time for years about this fucking guy. And the fact is, is that he could be facing a five-year prison sentence because of what, you know, he did again because he got fucking loaded and he got behind the wheel of a vehicle his third time in the last, I believe, six years. Uh, you know, and it's just, you cost your brother money, you're costing yourself money, uh, you're costing the company that you now work for money, because you swore to everybody, you swore to everybody that you were not loaded when you left WWE. That last night that you were there, that it was nothing. You were just, you it was a con just to get out of WWE's contract. And within three months of you signing with AEW, you fuck it up again. So everyone now is supposed to just rally around this guy and be like, you know, he's, he's, oh, Jeff's this, he's a guy with a heart of gold. Yeah. A heart of gold who almost killed somebody. He almost went up in the same situation that Sonny was in. Fucking cops pulled the goddamn guns on him. A part of me was just like, just fucking shoot him. <laughs> just because the fact it's just like, he's it, got it's, a gun! Just, it's just, yeah, it's just <laughs> like, you know, he's doing his fucking stupid dance at the same time. And they're just yeah. like, forget it. You know, like, it's just, I, I've... I feel like it was, a, like, watching that video was, like, out of, like, a, uh, a uh, what was that movie there with the, the kid there, the blonde kid, uh, Napoleon Dynamite, where, like, they just kind of, yeah, yeah. like, they talk, and the next thing you know, the scene just cuts, and they're in a different location doing something, and it was like that with the pullover. It's like, they get pulled over, the next thing you know, they're on a new location, like, okay, Jeff, walk that line. <laughs> he, he was, a, you know, he was a teen idol. That's the reason why I think he got where he got. Yeah. In the business. I think he was a teen idol. Girls love he got the girl pop, all that stuff. And but the fact is is that there were there were more people that were talented than him. There have been more people in the wrestling business that have been talent more talented than uh Jeff Hardy. But Jeff Hardy was an enigma. You know, it was perfectly fit that goddamn thing because he was an enigma because somehow he was over, um, you know, the fucking sleeve sh thing with the sweat socks just became this fucking deal because of him, you know. So every fucking indie wrestler from like the early 2000s, mid 2000s that had that deal, you could look back on it and be like, well, it's because of this jerk off. That's great. Um, you know, and his career should have been over after he showed up loaded at that pay-per-view for TNA against Sting. He should have been done. And if I was a booker, I would have meant I would have said that to him, and I would have been like, I would have never booked you after 2011. You'd be sent home. Because that's how I feel. Because every time this guy, oh, you know, oh, he's great, all oh, his, oh, fucks it up again. And I have no patience for that, and I have no sympathy for that. I don't care how fucking talented you are, because again, because of your bullshit. You almost killed somebody. Your brother's been fucking sick. Your brother's been goddamn sober for over 10 years. Mind you, I think it's mostly because he has a fucking wife that slit his throat in the middle of the night if he fell off the wagon, but that's besides the point. <laughs> but he's doing something constructive, not you. You're just sitting there and just... They're the ones having to make sure that you get from town to town, you go to the hotel. They're probably exhausted because of the fact that they have to not only get their shit together and be able to go from town to town to town, get to the hotel, make sure that, oh, I got to make sure that Jeff doesn't fall off the fucking wagon. Your brother doesn't need that. Your brother just, you know, because, again, he's got the, he's got Rubby Hardy over his fucking just shoulder the whole time, but he's just scared to death. 
but that works for him. Rubby Hardy and Matt Hardy work together because Matt stays sober and Rubby makes sure that he does that. And it probably scares him a little bit, but at the same time, it's like she's good for him because he keeps him on the fucking straight and narrow, which you haven't been. I can't remember one fucking time that this fucking jerk off has ever like proved me wrong. And you know, it's like I hope he does. I hope he goes to jail. I hope literally he's in jail for the next five years and his fucking career is over. No, I'm I'm not kidding. Like it's just like I've never liked Jeff Hardy. I've never like because I've seen where where they, every time they try to give him a position or anything like that, he fucks it up. You know, like RVD has had one pup bust and it's for pot, and that was in the fa- that was in the mid two thousands. It was bullshit, because, but it was dec- not decriminalized pretty much everywhere. It happened now, and he, like they pull him over, they'd be like, all right, have a good night, and just drive home. But it didn't. And then we wouldn't have had the ECW fucking relaunch go to shit after he got suspended. Because they would have pulled him over, and they would have been like, yeah, yeah have a good night. That fucking Jeff Hardy behind the wheel is just like he's probably listening to his fucking. I can hear the against the wall. Wow, as he drives into fucking school children. <laughs> I heard it was his TNA theme song, "Modest to the Top." Yeah. It's fucking shitty. Fucking showing up to like he's. I, I saw him earlier. He was he was at like some bar playing an acoustic set. It's just like that's the only thing I wanted Jeff Hardy, Jeff Jarrett to just walk in and hit him with a fucking guitar and just be like, "Take that, slap nuts!" That would have been a perfect way to end that fucking video. How do you like me now? How do you like me now? Fuck Jeff Hardy. I hope he goes to jail. Yeah. Oh man. We should have, he should have been elated tonight. I, I wish I could go on for longer about this fucking guy. But because, you know, Vince McMahon decides, well, I'm going to fuck this paralegal, uh, you know? Yeah. He kind of he kind of took the wind out of our sails. The, we were all, we were all geared away. up for a Jeff Hardy rant tonight for a good hour. <laughs> and it just like that guy just got completely diffused by this whole situation. Yeah, because Vince is just like, oh, I'm going to go fuck this paralegal. And uh, I guess me and uh, me and Laronitis are going to have the best tag team and most effective tag team in company history. Uh, you know, it, it's just you have this guy that that literally this should have been the headline. Me just for the next hour of just talking shit, and then also throwing my AEW two sets in there too. I would have made it nice and comical tonight, but I can't do that because we have a more important event going on right now with the NBA Finals. And the fact, too, that, like, Vince McMahon decided, again, he needed to fuck this paralegal. So. <laughs> oh, man. I can't make it fun. Yeah. It has to turn into, well, what did the board say? Like, is this going to have effect to get the stock price? Jesus, yeah, because I really want to be able to talk about non because this Because I really want to talk about the stock price for, for a company. Yeah. Right. Like it's that's re- like I work for fucking I'm Jim Cramer on fucking CNBC right now. Right. Five year outlook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be uh nutty one. So Danny you want me to pass over to Eric? Yeah, go right ahead. Game's closing in here soon. So they're predicting right now. Stephen A. Smith predicting Boston, Michael Woolbon predicting Boston. They're getting ready to get uh, this game underway here. It's almost time, but uh, Eric, you got to get like five to ten minutes before the game starts, so you can go right ahead and uh, give us your thoughts on this whole thing. All right. Well, first off, did you you want to hear what I was going to have as my really fucked up poll? <laughs> go ahead. It was going to be what's more reliable, Jeff Hardy behind the wheel, or Joe showing up for Mazza Media? <laughs> oh, there we go. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, we don't hesitate to take it to Joe here with jokes. <laughs> I know I was kind of hesitant to do it. I'm like, ah, I won't do it. But um, no, I mean, I kind of look back at like um, Double or Nothing in, that was out here in Vegas. And I know some people would talk about how great Jeff Hardy looked. He did not look good at all. 
I mean, he just looked terrible. I don't know if it was because everything was just starting to catch up to him. I don't know if he was actually drinking then. I mean, I'm just going to only speculate. But, you know, he just, or, you know, of course, age is also can be a factor too. But, you know, it just seemed like he was completely off. And then this all of a sudden happens where he gets pulled over and gets arrested. And it's like, you know, you know, just like any other athlete in any sport, you know, Jeff Hardy has a tremendous amount of talent. However, you know, the talent should not outweigh more than the problems and the headaches they cause. Um, you know, when Jeff Hardy was gone from WWE the first time, you know, there was a reason for that. And then he goes to Impact or TNA. And you know that, like, and Dan said best, like, you knew that, honestly, his final should have been right there where he had this, he screwed up um, maybe the ultimate dream for himself to get a chance to go face Sting. And he screwed that up. And honestly... I'm surprised none of these companies didn't just be like, no, until you can actually show us that you're consistently, you know, taking care of yourself and getting your, making yourself getting better, we have no purpose in signing you. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, after when Jeff Hardy literally walked out during a match at a house show, what was it? Matt Hardy was going on, like, talk as Jericho or something, and they were just talking about how, um, you know, um, Jeff Hardy was getting mistreated by the WWE during his run, and it's like, well... Maybe you could see why. You know, it's not a one-way street here. It works both ways. And, you know, it goes to show that, you know, Jeff Hardy has no place in the ring until he gets his life together. And, you know, um, like Matt Hardy, like, Honestly, someone should be, you know, Tony Khan, you know, I thought he has this, he brags about all this money that he has. Well, shoot, how about open up that checkbook and be like, Jeff Hardy, here's what we're going to do. You're not only you're going to go to rehab, but guess what? I am now paying for a personal driver for you. Like if he wants to really show that he cares about Jeff Hardy then go ahead and do that. Make sure he never is able to drive again, which I would hope not, considering what, third DUI in a whole decade, if I am got that right? Yeah, it sounds accurate enough. So, I don't know, it's just, you know, I always hear about, oh, he needs to think about his family and think about, his career and all that. But then when he literally walks out from WWE, how they had worries about him needing to take care of himself. And it just seemed like that wasn't the case. Well, it just seems like a failed experiment gone into AEW and... Honestly, that should have been something that Tony Khan should have been worried about from the first place. Not, oh, we're, we need to sign Jeff Hardy so we can get the Hardys back together. No, it, that's not what it should have been. It should have been, you know, think about all the red flags that come with Jeff Hardy. And that's the way that it should be. So, until, you know what, I don't care if it's a one year, two years. You know what, if Jeff Hardy was to be like, you know what, he's not wrestling anymore, you know what, I know this sounds mean, but good, I I hope he would be done, because, you know what, honestly, 
if he seriously is continue to drinking like this and because, you know, he's doing all these crazy bumps when he never really should be doing, then it goes to maybe factor that, you know, maybe being in the ring, he should call it a career and just focus on his own personal life, his personal health, to be able to live a long life for his kids to watch him grow um so for him to be an old man to watch his kids grow up and that's the way that i'll finish up right there all right thank you everyone for tuning in to hour one of mazza media uh, we're going to shut down this particular stream and then we're going to reactivate it in about two minutes um for the nba finals game six stream so we'll all be back from mazza media i'm mark and we'll see you guys again soon please look out for the new stream coming up shortly thank you